<laughs> yes. Yes. Everyone say yes. Sheesh. I need somebody to agree with me. It's just said a yes. <laughs> oh, yeah. Glory. Glory, glory, and glorious. God is on the throne. He's on the move. The exposure is happening. And it's a good day to die. <laughs> glory to God. We, what's the key to victory? Anybody remember? Avoid, Avoid deception. Yeah. Is God asking us to be consistent? Yeah. Amen. Is he asking us to be alert? Yeah. Yes. Is he asking us to be saturated? Yeah. Yes. Does he want us to be river children? Yeah. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. Matthew 12, please. <laughs> Glory. You know, we, we've been talking, and you're going to probably hear me constantly talk about getting in God's presence. I mean, I, I can't tell you anything else, but, you know. I mean, we can talk about so many other things, but, man, without God's presence, we ain't nothing. I'm going to tell you right now. And there's something that's been happening, and it's pretty amazing because uh, I had to uh, I had to go to uh, this, this new doctor, uh, and it was just uh, just for a routine type of thing, and we were talking about all kinds of stuff. Can everybody hear me? No. Okay, can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? And uh, we began to discuss certain things and whatever and share. And um, a sweet woman that was first first time I'd met her. And, and one of the things we discussed was some of the things that really affect humanity in, 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 in us. And... Uh, and as we began to talk about some of these things, I began to realize how spiritually this is effective. You know, in, in the other countries, one of the major diseases is dehydration. If a child gets the flu and they get dehydrated, they die because, you know. And there's a spiritual dehydration that's happening. And she began to explain to me about certain things and how things get in your blood and, and affect your blood because of dehydration. And, I, and as she, she was explaining this to me, I began to see this cup of the presence of God, like water. And in it was flowing the Word of God. It was united in one. And what happens is when an individual gets dehydrated... The water is gone, and the word becomes dry. And don't get me wrong, it becomes a seed, not power anymore. And what happens is, in, in, for us, when, when we become dehydrated, our liver and kidneys and stuff cannot filter out what needs to be filtered out. So it just lets it go. And it goes into our blood. And that's where a lot of problems are caused. People don't even realize that they're dehydrated. And there are many effects of being dehydrated. And one of them is fatigue. So there's spiritual fatigue. One of them is dizziness. Reduce cognitive processing. The... Confusion. Days, uh, 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 days uh, how, how can I say, days state of awareness. Can't aware of things. And irritation or irritability. Easily provoked. 
easily offended. This is spiritual dehydration. And this is what the enemy, I really believe. I mean, look at what's going on in the world right now. And look at what's going on in the body of Christ. There's a lot of spiritual dehydration. That's why people are backsliding. That's why they're going over places that, in the area. They're trying to get a drink, but they're drinking from the wrong fountain. Polluted, contaminated. Spiritual dehydration is something that we must be aware of. Amen? That's why it's important to constantly drink, stay filled, and, and, and assemble, and, you know, the things that we've been talking about. And I can tell you that, and again, I get calls from people who've been out of assembling, out of fellowship, and have fallen. And the reason for that is because of the lack of God's presence. And again, the enemy has succeeded in this with this dumb plague. I get people ask me all the time. What do you think about it? Of course, I don't wear a mask. They come up with a mask, gloves, and, ma you know, Darth Vader uniform. And they want to know, what do you think about this plague? And I tell them, it's a lie. It's a flu. It's a virus. I don't care. Everybody's gotten it. If they haven't gotten it, they should. Get it over with. It's 99.9% .9 success rate in overcoming it. And there's just lies going on more and more and more. And the media is lying about it. The, the, and the, listen, these hospitals get money to lie about it. You mark it. That it's just, I mean, you haven't heard anything about the flu now. Everything is the virus. I mean, it's flu season, but you haven't heard one aspect of the flu. You've heard everything about virus. It's the virus. Heck, if you go in there with a broken leg, they're going to claim you got the virus. No matter what. It's the virus. And people are freaked out in, in fear. I mean, you know, I mean, rubber gloves. Masks. I'm like, what the snap? Again, I, I got to hold myself back from snapping that thing on Wake up, America. You've been lied to. And it's constant. And they have a, yes, the hospitals are filled. There's nobody in the hospitals. <laughs> the only ones that are in the hospitals are the ones that have been injured of some sort or whatever. I mean, they're delaying everything. Look at how it's affected everything. Sports, economy. Every, now, this is not just here. It's global. This has been a global chemical warfare. And it's a lie. And you know what's happening? It's causing people to forsake assembly. And it's causing people to fall into a state of dehydration. Spiritual dehydration. Now they're beginning goofy. Amen? It's like going to Disneyland. Matthew 12, 43. Hallelujah. Spiritual dehydration. Let's speak it. When an unclean spirit goes out of a man, he goes through where? Dry places. That means unoccupied. Seeking what? Rest. So he's going into a dry place, right, to seek rest. Does everybody understand that? Now, and he finds none. So now, he's going into these dry places, but somebody else is occupying it. Does everybody get it? Now, then he says, I will return to my house from which I came. And when he comes, he finds it empty, swept, and put in order. Then he goes and takes with him seven other spirits more wicked than himself. And they enter and dwell there. And the last state of that man is worse than the first. So shall it also be with this wicked generation. Dry places already occupied by other spirits. 
So what happens then, first of all, there is no presence in these places. That's why it's called dry. Amen? There's no presence. That's why it's called what? Dry. It's been dehydrated, drained. And then he goes and takes other spirits because he's going back. He goes back the first time and tries to enter the empty place. The word of God is holding him off. But then he goes and gets seven others because it's not filled with the spirit. It can only hold off so long. Then, then it's overtaken again by spirits. See, the enemy knows how to access with constant pounding and draining to create a dry place. He will drain and then enter. Takes others to help, him, help them enter and dwells many times unknowingly. Then begins, it, then begins its acts of lust of self, promotion of self, and pride of life. In this, it elevates places that gets drier and drier. And the purpose of it, the, the reason why the enemy loves to dehydrate us is because he wants full control. See, he can only get partial control. But when he gets full control, you are now fleshed out. Again, this is called spiritual dehydration. Fatigue, dizziness, reduced cognitive processing, confusion, dazed states of awareness and irritabilities. Psalm 68. Hallelujah. That's why the word says, blessed are those who thirst and hunger for righteousness. They will be what? Filled. Psalm 68, verse 1. Let's speak the first six verses. Let God arise. Let his enemies be scattered. Let those also who hate him flee before him. As smoke is driven away, so drive them away. As wax melts before the fire, so let the wicked perish at the presence of God. But let the righteous be glad. Let them rejoice before God. Let them rejoice exceedingly. Sing to the Lord. Sing praises to him. Extol him who rides on the clouds by his name Yah. And rejoice before him. A father of the fatherless, a defender of widows, is God in his holy habitation. God sets the solidarity in families. He brings out those who are bound in prosperity. But the rebellious dwell in a what? Dry land. So where there's dryness, does the enemy have access? Yes. Rebellious dry, uh, dwell in a dry land. Isaiah 5. Hallelujah. Isaiah chapter 5, and verse 11. Spiritual dehydration. That's where the word dry bones comes from. It's spiritual dehydration. Verse 11, let's speak it together. Woe to those who rise early in the morning that they may follow intoxicating drink. They're drinking the wrong thing. Who continue until night till wine inflames them. The harp and the strings, the tambourine and flute and wine are for their feast, but they do not regard the work of the Lord, nor consider the operation of his hands. 
Therefore my people have gone into captivity because they have no knowledge. Their honorable men are famished and they stumble are, and their multitude dried up with what? Thirst. Therefore hell has enlarged into itself and opened its mouth beyond measure. Their glory and their multitude and their pomp. And he who is jubilant shall descend into it. People shall be brought down. Each man shall be humbled. And the eyes of the lofty shall be humbled. But the Lord of hosts shall be exalted in judgment. And God who is holy shall be hallowed in righteousness. Then the lambs shall feed in the pasture. And in the waste places of the fat ones, strong strangers shall eat. Again, he said, those that don't regard the works of his hands will be dried up with thirst. Refreshing is held back from them because of pride. And Jeremiah 17. be humbled. Jeremiah 17 and verse 5. That's why the Lord says, you know, it's, he's going to spit out those that are lukewarm. Amen. So we need to be hot. And the only way you're going to get hot is to be filled with oil. Where there's a flame constantly burning. <clears throat> Being in God's presence. In verse 5, let's speak it. Jeremiah 17. Thus says the Lord, Curses a man who trusts in himself. <laughs> and makes flesh his strength. Whose heart departs from the Lord. For he shall be like a shrub in the what? Desert. Let me share something with that word desert. That same spelling desert also means dessert. And I don't mean after dinner dessert. I mean dessert from the presence of God. A person that deserts will become desert-like. It says, he shall be like a shrub in the desert. And shall inhabit parched places in the wilderness. In a salt land which is not inhabited. But blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord. Whose hope is in the Lord. For he shall be like a tree planted by the waters, which spreads out its roots by the river, and will not what? Fear. Why? Because fear causes dehydration. When heat comes, in other words, he's not going to fear when the heat comes. He won't be dehydrated. And its leaf will be green, and he will not be what? Anxious in the year of drought, nor will cease from yielding fruit. The heart is what? Deceitful. Above all things. And desperately wicked. Who can know it? I the Lord search the heart. I test the thoughts of man. Even to give every man according to his ways. According to the fruit of his doings. And the fruit of his mouth. Heart departs from trusting. And submitting and following the Lord. And the voice of God in his presence. Psalm 11. Again, I was quite amazed in the area to where, I mean, here are children overseas that don't have any medical attention. They die tremendously because of dehydration. Because the water is contaminated or they have a bug or a flu or something and, and they get dehydrated. And they don't have a wa enough water to replenish them. And they die. We can spiritually die by, by being dehydrated. Psalm 11, verse 1. Let's speak it. In the Lord I put my trust. How can you say to my soul, flee as a bird to your mountain? For look, the wicked bend their bow. They make ready their arrow on the string, that they may shoot secretly at the upright in heart. At the upright. They shoot secretly. That shooting secretly means behind closed doors. Gossip is the killer. People gossiping. It's amazing how gossip can destroy an individual. 
they make they that they may shoot secretly at the upright in heart. People talking about people with no other thing than an offensive thing or hatred or whatever. It's wrong. It's ungodly. And it'll bring a curse on that person. And you know what else to do? Bring dehydration. If the foundations are destroyed, what can the righteous do? The Lord is in a holy temple. The Lord's throne is in heaven. His eyes behold. His eyelids test the sons of men. The Lord tests the righteous. But the wicked and the one who loves violence, his soul hates. Upon the wicked he will rain coals. Fire and brimstone and what? Burning wood, that's dry. Or burning wind, that's dryness. Shall be the portion of their cup. In other words, he will de let them dry out. For the Lord is righteous and he loves righteousness. His countenance beholds the upright. Hmm. All wickedness, all wicked shoot secretly with gossip. They accuse behind closed doors. And the burning wind which brings dehydration will be released from God to them. Psalm 73. What do we want to do? Avoid this. <laughs> Amen. Avoid it. Listen, don't call somebody up telling them somebody that they're gossiping about somebody. Listen, somebody's gossiping about you. You just fell into the gossip. You know, if you're upright with God, you're going to rebuke the person that's gossiping. You don't need to call the person that's being gossiped about. Amen? Just rebuke the person. Shut up. For you curse yourself. It's already too late. Now repent. That you may be refreshed in the presence of God. It's amazing how many, there's so much gossip in the body of Christ. It's like as the world burns. Hallelujah, it's a soap opera in itself. People can't mind their own beeswax. Hallelujah. I say to go Psalm 73, verse 25. <laughs> So if you get a call tomorrow from someone that says somebody's gossiping about you, rebuke them. Tell them you're doing the same thing. You're calling me, telling me somebody's gossiping about me. <laughs> oh, glory. Verse 21, 5. Whom have I in heaven but you, O Lord? And there is none upon the earth that I desire besides you. My flesh and my heart fail. But God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. For indeed, those who are far from you shall what? Perish when a person becomes dehydrated. I'm going to tell you, they're far from God. You have destroyed all those who de desert you for harlotry. In other words, for self, selfishness, other gods, other whatever. See, you can be your own God. Desert is the same thing as desert. It's spelled the same way. When you desert God, when you desert him, when you stop following and going according to his ways, you've deserted him. And you will become dehydrated. Hallelujah. Is everybody okay? Praise God. Let's go a little further. Verse 28. For it is good for me to draw near to God. I have put my trust in the Lord God. That I may declare all your works. Do he desert you the same way as dryness, dry land? Psalm 1. Beautiful. Leave it. Oh. No touch. Glory. Psalm 1, verse 1. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the gossiper. Hello. Nor stands in the path of the gossiper, who's a sinner. Nor sits in the seat of the unforgiving, bitter, 
But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf shall not wither, and whatever he does will what? Prosper. Prosper. Favor. But the ungodly are not so, but are like the what? Chaff, which the wind drives away. That's dry, scaly. Oh, oh, that protects a grain. It's dried up and scaly now. Therefore, the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment or the reward of God, nor sinners in the congregation of, right, of righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall what? Perish. They are rebellious. Chaff. They will not have, have access to the river of life. He, he doesn't allow that until they draw distant and distant, until they come to true repentance. Forgive. Come out of the bitterness. Forgive and bless. Amen? It's an area where people need to make amends with people you're still holding stuff on to instead of gossiping and causing. See, you, just because you didn't see the judgment today, I'm going to tell you it's coming. You will not have favor from God. 2 Corinthians 4, 7. Second Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 7. But we have this treasure in what? Earthen vessels, that the excellence of the power may be of God and not of us. We are hard pressed on every side, yet not crushed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed. Always carrying about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our body. For we who live are always delivered to death for Jesus' sake, that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our mortal body, so the world may see Jesus and not us. We are hard pressed. That means that we're, you know, we're attacked all the time. The word says that the enemy plans all day long, every single day, setting up snares. You're going to be bombarded. That's why you got to be dressed with the full armor. Go to chapter six. Verse 14. Uh, verse 11, I'm sorry. Chapter 6, verse 11. We are hard pressed. Oh, true ministries. We have spoken openly to you. Our heart is wide open. You are not restricted by us, but you are restricted by your own feelings. Desires. Now in return for the same, I speak as to children, you also be open. Do not be unevenly yoked with what? Unbelievers. Why, are unbelievers dry? Yeah. You hang with them, you're going to become dry. For what fellowship has righteousness with lawlessness? What communion has light with darkness? What has a desert with the river? What and what accord has Christ with Belial? And what part has a believer with an unbeliever? And what agreement has the temple of God with idols? For you are the temple of the living God, as God has said, I will dwell in them, I will walk among them, I'll be their God, and they'll be and they shall be my people. If they do something, come out from among them, be separate. That's sanctification. And don't touch, agree with what's unclean. Is gossip clean or unclean? Amen. There are things that are unclean that will drain you. In fact, some of them will drain you as quick as you, you won't even know it. Next thing you know, man, I don't understand why I'm so dry. It's something you agreed with. Something you said. Something you touched and agreed with. Something you approved. Do not touch what is unclean, then I will receive you, and I'll be a father to you, and you shall be my sons and daughters, says the Lord. Again, don't touch anything unclean. It will dehydrate you. Ephesians 4. We 
Oh, yeah. It's good to hear the pages turning on a Tuesday night. It's a fan to me. Ephesians 4.30. Hallelujah. Is everybody all right? You know, it's, it's, I, I'm sharing with you that we are entering a time. Again, there's a squeeze in time, but there is more. How can I say? You know, the word says that the, the path is narrow and difficult. Well, it's skinny and difficult these days. You got to go sideways in it sometimes. But the road to destruction is wider. So the path of righteousness is squeezing and the road to destruction is widening. You know, things, because so many people have come into an area where it's, it's common. It's common, okay. It's okay to do this. It's okay to do that. Well, you know, that's just life. No, that's not the way it is. There's only one life. And that's the one we need to follow, not the ways of the world. Hallelujah. In verse 30, do not grieve the what? Holy Spirit of God, by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Let all what? Bitterness. You want to get dry quick? Here you are. Let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. There it is. Dehydration. And be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God... God in Christ forgave us. People are still, oh yeah, I forgive them, but they're still holding bitterness. That's not forgiveness. Amen? Bitterness, offense, unforgiving will bring dehydration. This is spiritual dehydration. Jeremiah 3. Jeremiah 3. Verse 1. Glory. They say if a man divorces his wife and she goes from him and becomes another man's, may he return to her again. Would not that land be greatly polluted? But you have played the harlot with many lovers, yet return to me, says the Lord. Now I want you to know this is not talking about physical, he's talking about spiritual associations where other things have become gods to them. They played the harlot by touching unclean things. Verse 2, lift up your eyes to the desolate heights and see where have you not lain with them, men, by the road you have sat for them like an Arabian in the wilderness, and you have polluted the land with your harlotries and your wickedness. Therefore the showers have been what? Withheld. That's refreshing. That's saturation. The showers have been withheld, and there has been no latter rain. You, ha you have had a harlot's forehead. You refuse to be ashamed. That means humbled. Turn away. You will not, will you not from this time cry to me? My father, you are the God of my, the guide of my youth. Will he remain angry forever? Will he keep it to the end? Behold, you have spoken and done evil things as you were able. Again, we see her showers were withheld because of the refusal of to be humble and repent. Titus Oh no, 2 Timothy, I'm sorry. 2 Timothy chapter 1. Spiritual dehydration. <clears throat> the world has been dehydrated. Let me tell you that. They got dehydrated during the time of Noah. That's why the Lord flooded the place. But he over flooded, the, he oversaturated them. And, but that purpose was to destroy. Amen? 
The next time around, he's going to dehydrate with fire. He's going to allow that to happen. But the enemy right now is dehydrating the body of Christ. In 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 6. Is everybody there? Therefore I remind you to what? Stir up the gift of God which is in you through the laying on of my hands. For God has not given us a spirit of fear but of power and of love and of sound mind. Power, love, and sound mind. I can't express enough in how fear dehydrates people. Whoa. Sucks them dry. Therefore do not be what? Ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of his prisoner, but share with the, in the sufferings for the gospel according to the power of God, who has saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given to us in Christ Jesus before time began. But it has now been revealed by the appearing of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who has abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel, to which I was appointed a preacher as an apostle and a teacher of the Gentiles. Wow. And for this reason, I also suffer things. Nevertheless, I'm not ashamed, for I know whom I have believed, and I am persuaded that he is able to keep what I have committed to him until that day. Fear dehydrates, torments. Remember, irritabilities. Reduces cognitive processing. Fear protests. Oh no, fear protects pride. Fear protects pride. I'm going to say it again. Fear protects pride. And pride protects self. And pride spends more time defending self than surrendering to the refreshing waters of life. And it keeps a person dehydrated. You know, when a person is dehydrated, they're easily moved by the voice of the stranger. 1 Timothy chapter 1. That's why you see all kinds of chaos everywhere. I mean, it's all over the place. I, I, it's still baffling to me that People are still bound by that fear out there. I, I, I just, it's just, it just overwhelms me in the areas where everywhere I go. If there's one person in the place or two people in the whole building that don't have a mask on, it's like, hallelujah, high five me. <laughs> Glory to God. 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 3. Is everybody there? Cool. As I urged you when I went into Macedonia, remain in Ephesus, that you may charge some that, have, that they teach no other doctrine, nor give heed to fables and endless geologies, which cause disputes rather than godly edification, which is in faith. Now the purpose of the commandment is love from a pure heart, from a good conscience, and from a sincere faith, from which some, having strayed, have turned aside to idle talk, gossip, desiring to be teachers of the law, understanding neither what they say nor the things which they affirm. But we know that the law is good if one uses it lawfully, knowing this, that the law is not made for the righteous person, but for the lawless and in sub, subordinate, for the ungodly and for the sinners, for the unholy and profane, for the murderers of fathers and murderers of mothers, for manslayers, for fornicators, for sodomites, for kidnappers, for liars, for perjurers. And if there is any other thing that is contrary to sound doctrine, according to the glorious gospel of the blessed God, which was committed to my trust. Let me share with you sin <laughs> as the main cause of dehydration. Pride is sin. 
Amen? Fear is sin. People don't realize that. Spiritual dehydration is rampant through the world right now. Some people are so dehydrated they can't even come into the presence of God. They have a very hard time with it. Some people are so dehydrated they're not willing to accept a rescue. They think that they're fine. Those that don't know Jesus are so dehydrated they're dry. And in this area, they have no way to the river to drink. And no matter what you try to tell them, they refuse it because they're so confident in themselves that they can't come out of it. Only God can intervene in that. Amen? And most of the time, people fall into an area of chaos or something that happens to them one, so that it wakes them up. In other words, they have to get hit by a train or whatever, you know. Something happens. Chaos, whatever, hardship, loss of job. Man, let me tell you, your jobs will drain you if you let it. Where you work, I mean, you're around all kinds of heathens, and they're draining you. You got to make sure that you get refreshed. I don't care where you work. You can be drained. Amen? Psalm 24. Glory. Don't get in disputes. You'll both get drained. In arguments. Your flesh will want to drain the other flesh. <laughs> and don't worry. God's got it if you let him. Hallelujah. <laughs> Stay in your own garden. <laughs> Till your own garden. Don't worry about what anybody else's garden's growing. Hallelujah. Verse 3. Let's speak it. Who may ascend into the hill of the Lord, or who may stand in his holy place? He who has what? Clean hands and a what? Pure heart. Who has not lifted up his soul to an idol, nor sworn deceitfully. He shall receive blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. This is Jacob, the generation of those who seek him, who seek your face. Lift up your heads, O you gates. Be lifted up, evil uh, everlasting doors. And the king of glory shall come in. Who is the king of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O you gates. Lift up your everlasting doors, and the king of glory shall come in. Who is the king of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the king of glory. Let there be relationship. Let there be fellowship. Be wise. Amen? Be discerning. Be prepared. Because the enemy's coming. He's here. He's trying to dehydrate you. He's trying to get you to move out of position. He's trying to follow, cause you to follow something out of a, emotion and making emotional decisions. Stay strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Stay connected. Remember, your confession saying that you are my fulfillment connects you. You're my fulfillment. See, rejection, when people get rejected, they fall into dehydration. Rejection is an attack of the enemy. It's an emotional. You know, you're more, more emotionally drained than you are anything. When people come from places, whatever, they are emotionally drained. And if you stay in that condition, the enemy will take advantage of it and dehydrate you. And then if he died, gets you to that place, he can speak what he wants and people begin to listen. God's voice. God's voice is louder in the river than out of it. Amen? His voice, that's what he calls, his voice sounded like what? 
running water. Amen? Because his voice is louder in the river than it is in dry land. It's hard to hear. The only thing you're going to hear is the voice of the stranger. Remember, Jesus was led into the wilderness, into the desert. And what was in the desert? The enemy. He was in the desert. But he overcame because Jesus is the river of life. <laughs> he can bring life in a desert. He can bring life wherever he goes. That's why it's important to maintain that fellowship. That's why we have the Holy Spirit. What is the representation? Water. One of the symbols. Amen. Water of life. You may take part, take freely of the water of life as long as you have clean hands and a pure heart. You won't fall into drought. Stay strong. Stay alert. Stay consistent. And be ready. Because it ain't over. Amen. It's not over. We'll be hitting seasons that will seem dry. They're going to try to still prevent us from assembling. You know that. Remember, we already won. <laughs> we already won the battle. So let God have the last say. And just stay filled. Put a guard over your mouth, your lips, your eyes, your ears. Put guards over. Lord, guard me. Let not anything come out of my mouth that would be offensive to you. Forgive and bless. Forgive and bless. Hashtag walk away. Amen? <laughs> and don't hop the fence into somebody else's garden. <laughs> Praise God. Lord, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. Thank you for preparing us. Thank you for not allowing us to agree with foolishness, but allowing us to agree with what you say, that we may be refreshed in your presence, refreshed in the morning, refreshed coming in, refreshed going out. Help us, Papa. And Lord, I pray conviction, correction to each and every one of us here tonight. That whatever is being held, it's causing any kind of dryness or dehydration. That you would expose it so that we can become saturated. For your glory, for your honor, and for your praise. In Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. Hallelujah.